Alright guys, I'm going to read you another fairy tale for our last fairy tale week. And I've got my brother's grim fairy tales here again. We know what those guys are. They made up fairy tales a super long time ago. Today, I'm going to use my table of contents here to find the story I want to read. I want to read Rapunzel today. So if you go all the way down, there's Rapunzel right there. And it says 139. So that means I need to go to page 139. It's the very last fairy tale in the book. All right, and I'll show you my picture after I read because this is a big book. Okay, Rapunzel. Once upon a time, there was a woman who looked into her neighbor's garden and coveted the fresh greens going, growing there. She loved them. The garden belonged to an enchantress, and even in the dead of winter, it flourished with ripe vegetables and herbs in flower. The woman loved, above all other foods, a particular green called Rapunzel. So she loved Rapunzel. And as the winter drew on and all the food to be had at the market was either dried or bottled, the woman grew more and more envious of the enchantress's garden. Finally, she went to her husband and said, I cannot go another day with our, without green things to eat. Sneak into the enchantress's garden when the night is darkest and bring me back some of her Rapunzel. So she doesn't mean the princess Rapunzel. She means um, a plant growing in there called Rapunzel. I've never heard of that. I didn't know that there was a plant called Rapunzel. But there is. And she wants some. It's green. The husband did not like to do this, as everyone was afraid of the enchantress. But his wife gave him no peace until at last, on a night with no moon, he climbed over the garden wall and pulled up a handful of Rapunzel. Trespasser, shrieked a voice. How dare you rob my garden? It was the enchantress, and her face was black with rage. The man begged her to have mercy, to forgive him, but the enchantress would not listen. She cast a spell over the man that twisted him into a juniper tree. And then she planted him in the spot where he'd pull up. He'd pulled up her Rapunzel. So she'd cast a spell on him to turn him into a tree, and then she planted him right there where he tried to take her Rapunzel. When the woman's husband did not return, and she saw the juniper tree hunched in the enchantress's garden where the Rapunzel had grown, she feared the worst and went to the enchantress to beg for her husband's life. So there she is. The enchantress looked down at the woman with cold eyes. How will I guard my garden against thieves if I do not punish those that I catch? She said. If you return your if I return your husband to you, then you must give me in return no less than your firstborn child. What other fairy tale did we read when some evil character told the other the I, I think it was a queen in that book that they had to give her his her firstborn child. Did you say Rumpelstiltskin? Yeah. And Rumpelstiltskin, the queen had to give Rumpelstiltskin her child, right? Because he's, he turned all that stuff into gold for her. The woman in her despair agreed, and the witch changed the juniper tree back into the man. And the husband and wife went home again, very sad indeed. In time, the woman did have a child, a daughter with hair as bright as the sunlight, but no sooner had the child been placed in her mother's arms than the enchantress appeared at her door and demanded the baby for herself. As soon as the baby was in her arms, the enchantress disappeared, and no one saw her again. The enchantress abandoned her house and garden and traveled deep, deep into the forest. Where she stopped, she built a cottage and raised the girl there all alone. She named the baby Rapunzel and soon came to prize her above all things. But as Rapunzel grew into a young woman and her beauty shone brighter and brighter with each year, the witch began to fear that Rapunzel would leave her. So she built a tall ivory tower without a single door, but only a narrow window at the top, and she shut Rapunzel up there. 
and promised her a horrible punishment if she ever tried to escape. When the witch wanted to enter the tower, she called up to the window, Rapunzel, let down your hair! And Rapunzel, who had never had her hair cut, let down a long, long braid that the witch would climb up. But one day, a young man came riding through the forest. He heard the witch call to Rapunzel, saw Rapunzel lean out the window, and he fell in love with her in a moment. So she waited for the witch to go away again, and when she had gone, he went to the foot of the tower and called, Rapunzel, let down your hair. So there she is stuck there, and her long hair is coming down. Rapunzel thought it was the witch calling, so she was shocked when the young man climbed in at her window instead. She had never seen any other person besides the witch, because she was locked up there, remember? And she marveled at the stranger who now stood in her loom. But the young man spoke to her kindly and told her of the wide world that she had never known. So when he asked her to come away with him, she answered yes. So with his sword, they cut her hair and tying it to the window, climbed down the braid. They quickly hid themselves in the forest, for just then the witch returned. Seeing Rapunzel's golden hair already hanging out the window, she became angry and called out, What are you doing, wicked girl? Just wait till I get up there. But when the witch climbed up to the top, the young man gave the braided hair a great yank and pulled it down, trapping the witch in her own tower. The witch screamed curses at them from the window, but they rode away, and not long after, they were married very happily. They built a cozy house, and around it they planted a garden where all were welcome. There they are. The end. Can you tell somebody in your house about the magic and the good characters and the bad characters in that book and what makes it a fairy tale? Go ahead and share with them and come back for another fairy tale. Bye.